Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at how to use reports inside of Power BI from a consumer's perspective. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Reports, reports inside of Power BI, how do you use them? So what I wanna focus on is using and navigating reports from an end user's perspective. So someone that's just consuming reports, maybe they're not the authors, they don't really know anything else about Power BI, maybe it's your first time to Power BI. How do you use those awesome reports that are inside of it? And I use the term reports because there are also dashboards inside of Power BI with inside of your organization. One thing I hear a lot also is you may be told it's a dashboard, but it's really a report. So I'm saying the term report internally, you may have been told it's a dashboard. Just know that we're probably talking about the same thing. It's fine. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my computer. All right, so we're looking at Power BI and we are inside of our My Workspace. So every user inside of Power BI has a My Workspace. This is your personal sandbox. You can publish things here. You can do all sorts of stuff. We are gonna be looking at reports from that consumer's perspective. So I don't wanna get caught up in all the licensing aspects of Power BI. And I don't necessarily know that you're gonna be able to get to app workspaces or not, depending on what you can do. From an enterprise perspective, the distribution model for consuming reports is going to be an app. And I did a previous video on how to navigate apps. So be sure to check that out if you're not familiar with apps. But in this case, I'm gonna assume that you are looking at the report from an app. And so let's go to the app section and we'll go into our app. And this app defaults to the actual report, not a dashboard. And so from a report perspective, there's a bunch of things that I can do here in order to navigate it itself. So first thing that stands out to me over on the right side is I can see filters. And in this particular report itself, I don't have any filters defined here. And so I can end up just hiding that if I need to, or if I did have filters assigned, I can select those filters, I can manipulate that, and then I can collapse the filter pane, just get it out of the way so I've got more real estate for the report. One thing to understand about visuals inside of Power BI is they are interactive. So with inside of a report, I can select a given bar on that given report, and it will interact with other visuals to filter those down based on the selection I made. And so I can switch over and say, like, I just want to look at March. Hey, look at that March is there. Now I can also do a cross selection of those visuals. So one thing I can do is I have March selected, but I want to look at March from the context of Dustin. And so I'll hold down the control button and click. And now I'm looking at filtered data across the board for Dustin and the February timeframe in this case and then I can just click on it again to go back to the state that I was in. One other thing you may have noticed is when I hover over data, by default, I will get a tooltips of sorts. And so we'll see some information from a tooltip perspective. And then this report here, I actually have configured what's called a report tooltip, which gives me more details than what a generic tooltip would do. So your visuals may or may not have report tooltips enabled for them. So that's okay, just know that they exist. The other thing I'm gonna see is if I'm within inside of a visual, I will see some buttons up here that will give me more information here. So one thing we can do here is I can hover over the filter item and it'll tell me the filter context of that visual. So think of this as filter restatement. So it's just telling me how this visual is actually filtered. The other thing I can do is I can actually pop this up so I can go into focus mode and that will show me just that given visual. So for this visual, it doesn't do a whole lot. So, but if I do it for maybe say our bar chart, I can do that and I get a bigger view of that bar chart. And then I can go ahead and go back to my report. The other thing I can do here, depending on whether these options are enabled inside of your tenant, I can go ahead and select the ellipsis and I will have an option to export some data. I can show data that is under, you know, actually the data that's resulting in this graph, or I can do spotlight. So if I do spotlight, it'll kind of gray out everything else and just focus on the chart or visual in that I'm specifically selecting. I can also change sort orders and I can do sort by. So exporting of data, like I said, this may or may not be allowed inside of your tenant or for that given report. But if I do that, it will give me some options here. I can do it, uh, I can do summarized data. I can do 
the underlying data if that option's available. I can also choose whether to have this as CSV or Excel. One thing to note is there are limits to how many rows you will get from this, so it's not necessarily the entire data set, so be aware of that. But this gives you a really quick option to be able to get this into Excel and maybe slice it and dice it further in an area that may be more comfortable to you at this time. I would encourage you though to play around more with Power BI to get more comfortable with the Power BI piece of this. Down below you'll also see pages as part of the actual report itself. And so I'm on the overview, I have country overview, I have a tool tip, I also have additional overview which maybe has some additional items. So I can select through those pages. Within a visual, you may also have the ability to drill through. So for example, I'll go to the map, we'll right click on the United States, and then I'll have a drill through option of which I can go to my country overview page. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take me to the page in question and pass through that filter context, in this case, United States, to that report. So let's go ahead and select it. We'll go to the country overview. We'll see that United States is here. If I expand that filter item, you will now see that the sales country is United States because that's what was passed in. And then you'll also have a button here. It may be in a different location, but you can select that button to go back to the main report. So it allows some navigation type items. Along with drill through, we also have the capabilities to do drill down. So I can drill down, drill up and whatnot. So let's go to a visual that has this. One thing I could do is I could turn on the ability to drill down. And then when I double click, it'll actually drill down into that given item. I can also say, go back up. I can also just individually go down to the next level and so on and so forth and go back up. And then I could also say, expand all down one level in the hierarchy. And this will also go down, depending on what type of visual you have, it may actually expand it out. So like if it's a matrix, it'll show it all that data inside of the visual itself. So there are different things that you can do from a drill perspective. So make sure that you're looking at the header bar of that visual to understand if there are options available for you. Okay, so that's actually using items inside of a given report. In this particular report, there's also some images here that are being that are working like buttons. And so I can go over, I can see this image, I can select it. It will actually pop out a slicer pane for me. I've just created that for this given report. And then I have an actual button on this, which is the back arrow, so I can select that, and then that will hide that slicer panel for me. If you see images on the given report, it may be that you can interact with them as well. So hopefully there's some layout that gives you some clues as to whether that's available or not. Okay, that's navigating a report inside of the report itself, but let's see what's available from the toolbar perspective uh, for a given report. All right, so let's go down the line. I've got my file option, so I can print, I can do some embedding, I also have the ability to export to PowerPoint and PDF if those options are enabled from a tenant perspective and also if the given report supports those capabilities. So if you don't see those options available, it may just be that they're not allowed for this given report. I can also change the view of this report. So I can do fit to page, fit to width, things of that uh, nature. I can also try and use high contrast colors as well. And so we can select that. This is for accessibility purposes. Based on the given report, it may look a little funky but that might be something that can help you read that report. So we can also look at the selection pane and the bookmark pane. So in this case, I can show the bookmark pane and I have bookmarks for this given report. Bookmarks are just a basically a snapshot of a given time when those items are available. And so I can optionally go through and select those items. The other thing I can do here is I can say reset to default. So Power BI is gonna save the state of when I actually look at a report. So when I come back, it's gonna leave it in that state that I left it. I can optionally say, hey, just take me back to default and let me look at the original report that was shown to me. Talking about bookmarks again, I also have the capability of adding my own personal bookmarks. So if there's a certain way that I've got certain slicers and I wanna save the state of that for reference later on, I can add a given personal bookmark, give it a name, and I can also choose to make this my default view. So we'll go ahead and save it. And then under personal bookmarks in that bookmark pane, you will see my actual bookmarks listed there. So let me go ahead and turn off the bookmark pane because we're done with that now. You can also see related items. So this has to do with other dashboards and data sets that may be related to this report that may be useful for you. And you can optionally subscribe to this report, which means if the data changes, I'll actually get a notification that something happened. 
Do note that subscribing to items is based on licensing, and so you may or may not be allowed to actually use that option. And then in the ellipsis, I can actually choose to generate a QR code for this report, and I can also use Analyze in Excel to actually go ahead and use uh, Excel like pivot tables and whatnot to explore the data further. There are a lot of options that are available for reports. Some of them may be hidden from you and not necessarily readily in your face to so make it very obvious that they exist, but they do exist inside of those reports. So be sure to play around with the report, explore it a little bit. Maybe it's in the title bar of the visual or that toolbar for the individual visuals. Maybe it's up top in the toolbar for the whole report and or maybe it's in one of those hidden panes like the bookmark pane or selection pane or something of that or the filter pane, maybe something of that nature that you can use to further explore and customize those reports to your liking. All right, hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions. You can go and leave that down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.